Well, one of the biggest jobs the president has is defending American policy and explaining American values overseas. It's the first question people ask. What is going on with Donald Trump? So trade is just the latest example of something that is very, very complicated. You have experts there for a reason. These agreements take multiple years to right. negotiate and to go in with saying, okay, we're just going to walk away if we don't like this one aspect of agriculture, uh, which is just one smart part of the deal. What's the best alternative to the negotiating position? I mean, that is a fundamental principle of negotiation. You have to know what the alternative is. Unfortunately, our alternative is always, it seems to be in this administration, we're just going to get rid of everything, build walls, and we don't have well, any actual policy to follow up. Um, but within that, you've also found Saudi influence of as a very extremist interpretation of Islam. Uh, it has been allowed to invade the thinking of other Muslim communities. And that's going to be a challenge, particularly for the United States, as Donald Trump just cut a billion dollar arms deal with uh, the Saudi Arabia government. I mean, so there is a career foreign service ambassador in Qatar. And you have people in all of these Gulf states who would have probably liked to know in advance that Donald Trump Trump was going to go to Saudi Arabia and announce a couple billion dollars in arms sale, thereby upsetting the entire balance of the region. Right. So things, information like that is generally helpful to share with the people you have on the ground and good for diplomacy. So this is not just a diplomatic problem. This is something emblematic of how Donald Trump does business. As a CEO, it is all about his whims and what he wants. And it doesn't matter if it creates a log jam in process and actually getting things done. The sad thing is we don't have a CEO of this country right now who is the visionary leader who can share a vision for foreign policy and national security. Your security clearance does not go with you when you leave government. So if he left at, in August 2014, even if he re-upped it for a maximum of two years, that is August 2016, well into the campaign. Plenty of time to say, okay, if we're looking at you to be the national security advisor, he should be uh, reinvestigated, declare all of his payments. That should have been part of the conversation then. So what this points to is that the White House not only neglected the background briefing process, they probably gave him access to classified information he should not have had access to. That is probably why you have Sean Spicer at the podium bending over backwards to throw this on politically on President Obama, because this points to serious White House negligence of the lock him up type. Well, what we didn't recognize in this speech are the millions of Afghan refugees that are living in Pakistan, which is a lever that Pakistan has on U.S. forces, in addition to the fact you have a Haqqani network and other terrorist networks and the Taliban headquartered in Pakistan. So it's a double-edged sword playing hard game with Pakistan. They have the ability to flood over the borders with thousands upon thousands of people that will destabilize the country. And that has fundamentally been the challenge every administration has had in dealing with the Afghanistan Pakistan border, in addition to the fact that it's extremely porous. They have systematically removed uh, any efforts to be looking at and countering extremism in white communities. The, count so? the Countering Violent Extremism program is now entirely focused on people of Muslim descent. There is no, in the Obama administration, it was recognized, a Southern Poverty Law Center has also recognized that white nationalism is on the rise and probably the <clears throat> biggest risk to people, more so than any outside or external terrorism force. That is no longer a priority in this administration. Those teams have been disbanded in Department of Homeland Security, in Department of Justice. So not only do we have a president who is preaching this cultural rhetoric of divide, you have policies being implemented that recognize that as well. Why?